Hi, my name is Jasper and welcome back to the channel. In case you're new here, I'm an entrepreneur and remote marketing consultant and in this video I want to talk about the importance of content marketing in the modern decision making process. When working with B2B clients, as I do quite often, there's always one thing that they really seem to struggle with. And that is investing in a good content marketing strategy. A lot of the times you will hear things like, but I just want to get more sales. Can't we just promote the product through the advertising campaigns as we always did? But there's one problem with this. Nowadays, the decision making process that consumers go through and also B2B companies go through is a lot different than in the past. The thing is, a properly executed content marketing strategy is definitely a lot more expensive than a well-executed advertising campaign. But what's the alternative? Research and reality have both shown that content marketing has become an invaluable asset to complement a salesperson's job. Specifically, the ability to inform and teach people about all the different features and all the advantages that your product or service has to offer them. The internet allows people to really educate themselves about this in their own time. And this is something that they will definitely do. A large portion of your target audience will start their search online through Google search or YouTube, which is the second biggest search engine in the world. People usually start with the problem that they are experiencing or maybe already with one of the options for the products that they have in mind. In this video, I want to go through an example that I recently had myself where I am looking for a new coffee maker and how I started this journey basically. So every now and then I really enjoy working from a coffee shop. And of course they make the nicest flat whites that my Nespresso machine at home can obviously not compete with. So after having some of these and then working at home again, I really started to miss this really nice espresso or these really nice milk based products like a flat white for example. This experience triggered me to start an online search about my options. Now, First of all, and this is something that consumers will go through a lot of the time, I will look at family and friends to see what they are using and what they are recommending. So friends of mine, for example, have a Rocket Apartamento, which is a coffee maker, one of the piston machines, so a manual espresso maker, and it makes the nicest espresso. Like for the taste and for the quality to make something at home, I don't really think that there's anything that compares to it. But on the other hand, it also takes some experience and some skill to really pull a nice shot of espresso out of these machines. On the other side, when I visit my parents, they have a Jura, which is an automatic espresso maker, which also makes a nice espresso if you have the right beans in it. And so starts my journey for finding a nice coffee maker for my place. One of the first things that I start searching for online is manual versus automatic espresso makers to really see like what, are, what the differences are and find out which one is more the thing that I'm looking for. I find, for example, that a Jura is still one of the better machines to have an automatic espresso maker. And also that these manual machines, for example, are a really nice addition to the look of your kitchen as well, because most of them look really nice. It's like you have a coffee place yourself. But as I already told earlier in this video, I also learned that it's a lot harder to pull a nice shot of espresso from these manual machines. Now, while I was searching for this on Google, there were a couple of results. I opened a couple of tabs and an interesting thing to know here is that these websites that I visit in this phase of the process will also be recommended later on. For example, when I'm later on looking for a specific machine and the website that I looked at in the beginning also has a post or a product page for this machine, Google will put this in front of me first because Google already knows that I know the website, I'm familiar with it. So they make an educated guess that I will be more likely to click that page and to actually like what I see. This is something that not a lot of people know that Google works this way, but it is something that is way more obvious on YouTube. 
For example, if you are looking at a video of a channel that you are not subscribed to, later on you will definitely see other videos from the same creator recommended in your home feed or maybe even with the next videos after you watched a video on YouTube. It basically works the same way on Google, it's just a bit less obvious. But this also shows the importance of creating content that is more in the beginning of the entire decision-making process. And whereas this content, like for example, a manual versus an automatic machine, if you maybe are only selling manual machines, why this content is still important for you, even though it wouldn't bring you any revenue directly from that post. People will already get familiar with your brand. They will start trusting your brand and if the time is there for them to make their purchase decision, the chances are much higher that they will eventually choose for your brand, for your store, to buy their espresso maker in this case. So next in my search, I go to YouTube. I look for a couple of different options, like for example, all the different models that Shura makes and really see what the features are and also judge by the person presenting and tasting the coffee, how well he likes the machines as well. This also gives me more of a feel of what it is like to use the machine and to make a better, more educated decision about which machine is really worth it to me. I think that YouTube is the perfect channel for this because you have the extra dimension of the visual and this is something that really can help people in their decision-making process. In this case, I'm talking about coffee makers, but the last time I was buying a new car, I also found myself going to YouTube to search for reviews of the specific cars that I was looking at to get a better feel of all the different features that they provided and also what driving experiences the reviewers described for each car. And this was something that definitely had a significant influence in my decision to decide which cars in the end I wanted to test drive myself first, of course, um, but also which car that I eventually ended up buying. It is really valuable to create really good content around everything that has to do with the products and services that you offer and more importantly, make sure that it is honest content. Try not to only talk for your shop, but try to give honest advice in general. People will much rather buy something from you if you say that, for example, a certain coffee maker makes like the most disgusting coffee, but the other one is pretty nice, than if you would say like all the coffee makers that I sell make the perfect cappuccino. Like people know that this is not the case, so if you are honest, you will also be able to build a lot more trust with people and with your future customers. And besides that, all this content that you are creating for your marketing, for your content strategy, is also content that your salespeople can use to, for example, follow up with people or even to send over to new prospects. Now, if you want to learn more about how this all specifically works for early stage B2B startups, I also created a video about that recently, which will be linked here. Make sure to check it out if that's relevant for you. If you have any experience with content marketing or any really good examples that you saw for content marketing, share those experiences in the comments below. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel for weekly new videos each Wednesday, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.